when it comes to aliens, this topic can be very controversial. I just put out a video talking about Fox News admitting that there is a threat due to the amount of UFO activity that we've seen and all of the information that's been released by the government concerning aliens. And of course, we all have our own views concerning these things because we have really been influenced by the media and by the news and movies and cartoons. When I was growing up, I wanted to meet aliens. I wanted to have the E.T. experience where I helped send him back home. How cool would that be? Every kid wanted their own little alien, I'm pretty sure, after watching that movie so they could ride their bicycle and fly around in the sky. But when you start looking into these cases, you find out it's not such a pretty picture like in the movies. You hear some really bad horror stories. Never is it a really good meet and greet where they just want to see what we are and be our friends. And some of these people, and many of these people that have these experiences, have no history of being crazy, paranoid, schizophrenic, but they are often plagued by certain encounters for the rest of their lives, if not quite often. So I want to show you why, when I said in the last video, that these things are demonic in nature and that there is a plan to deceive the world when it comes to aliens and what they actually are. Are they from other planets or are they demons? We're about to find out. I want to show you some things that you may not have seen about aliens because again, this topic is going to be appearing in the news. Just watch. It will be there. And there is some major deception coming if they go through with the plan. If not, at least you know what you're dealing with if you were to encounter an alien of your own and have one of those experiences. So pay attention to this guy right here. He has studied UFOs and alien phenomenon quite in depth. We came across a particular video we had done six months before, before we came to the truth. We had videoed this person in his home we had sat there right in front of him, listening to him, watched him, never heard a word he said. The video caught it though. It's interesting. Went back and played this particular video, and this is what we found. What follows is the case of Bill D's experience that took place in Christmas, Florida in 1976. His abduction started out typically late at night in bed. Earlier in the evening, he saw some anomalous lights through the living room window over a forest north of his house. He assumed it was a police helicopter searching for drug runners or something. Whatever it was, it agitated his dogs for several hours thereafter. He eventually went to bed. He was lying in bed, kept wide awake by the barking dogs when paralysis set in. He was unable to cry out. He could, he could see nothing but a whitish gray, like a mist or a fog although he sensed someone or something was in his room. His wife didn't awaken. The next thing he knew, he was being levitated above his bed. He then had the sensation he was being suspended by what felt like a pole inserted into his rectum. By this time, he was alive with terror, but couldn't scream. Here's where the story becomes very interesting. The following is an excerpt taken directly from the transcript of Mr. D's interview. I thought I was having a satanic experience, that the devil had gotten a hold of me and had shoved a pole up my rectum and was holding me up in the air. So helpless, I couldn't do anything. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, or Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I did, there was a feeling or a sound or something that either my words that I had thought or the words that I had tried to say or whatever had hurt whatever was holding me up in the air on this pole. And I felt like it was withdrawn and I fell. I hit the bed because it was like I was thrown back in the bed. I really can't tell, but when I did, my wife woke up and asked why I was jumping on the bed. Typical type of experience, I hear this many times, you know, same scenarios. In all the research we had done, we had never heard of a case of anybody stopping an experience. All the researchers, the top researchers, were saying that this could not be done. You couldn't stop an abduction experience. They had no record of it. So here I am with a case where a guy says he called out in the name of Jesus and stopped an experience. Was this one case unusual? But I knew I had something powerful. 
When God showed me to go back and look at this video, I knew this was something unique. And if I could confirm that it wasn't just unique in that one case, then this could be absolutely huge in the UFO community. I contacted these top researchers in the country. I said, guys, I've got a case here. I don't know what to make of it. I shared them the case. Each time I did, they asked, can we go off the record? And I said, sure. I can't tell you their names, but I can tell you what they said. Each one of them said, yes, sir, we've come across cases like this ourselves, where they've been able to stop it using prayer or Jesus's name. I said, excuse me, how come we have never seen this documented? You're telling us otherwise that it can't be done. It can't be stopped. First answer they usually gave us, we didn't know what to make of it. I would have been fine with that. The second answer is what puzzled me and got me kind of angry they, because it was that one that I want you to hear for sure. They said we couldn't go there because it might affect our credibility in the realm. Do I hear cover up? Did I mention government? No, I didn't. What I'm telling you is there's a cover up but this information, and has been, by the top researchers that you people rely on to hear the truth from. I said to them, you know guys, I got nothing to lose. I work for a living, I don't write books, I don't do all this stuff that you do. I said, I just wanna document this as a researcher. So I went after those cases, because I now knew they were there. Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence, okay? Documented evidence. I questioned, I had to show biblically if this was relating to the Bible, where the authority come from? Back to Ephesians. At the end of Ephesians in that chapter talking about spiritual warfare, after putting on the whole armor of God, which is defense protection, these people were showing that there was an offensive move. An offensive move. You can be in defense with protection, but to defeat the enemy, these entities, you have to do something offensive. Ephesians 6:19, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. That's what these people have done in the presence of these entities to make known the mystery of the gospel. What's that mystery? This is where the authority comes that they're able to stop these entities because it's Christ in you. That power was passed down from God to the Son, Father to the Son, over everything above the earth, on the earth, and below the earth. When you become a Christian, give yourself to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit passes that authority on to you. Talk about high technology from planets from who knows where. I don't think this is what we're dealing with. And all this supposed high technology that, that they seem to have, guess what? It takes only one name to put them in their place. We are dealing with a huge, probably the most important deception on humanity. I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played. That game being the effort to weaponize space, to control the earth from space and space itself. Von Braun's purpose in life during the last years of his life, his dying years, was to educate the public and decision makers about why space-based weapons are a dumb, dangerous, destabilizing, too costly, unnecessary, unworkable, undesirable idea. And as a practically a deathbed speech, he educated me about those concepts and who the players were in this game. 
and gave me the responsibility, since he was dying, of continuing this effort to prevent the weaponization of outer space. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, the dirty commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Cal, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. A lie. We often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? These are entities masquerading as high technological aliens, but they can be defeated by one name. I have case upon case upon case upon case that can prove that. 